<sighs> morning. Good morning, Cake Train Nation, and welcome to another episode of I Just Woke Up. What comes to mind when you hear the phrase, real life cyborg? Chances are the first thing that came to your mind was someone with a robotic prosthesis, a prosthetic leg or prosthetic arm, or maybe you thought of a different type of medical technology such as a artificial heart or a pacemaker. Maybe you didn't think of a medical application. Maybe you thought of somebody who uses Google Glass or a smartwatch or any piece of external technology that has become an extension of an individual in their everyday life. Now, if you thought of any one of these things, you would be correct. All of them fall within the category of real-life cyborgs. But today, we wanted to highlight some extraordinary individuals who are cyborgs to the point of almost being science fiction. So I'm going to send it over to Drake, and he's going to start off today's list. What's up, Drake? What's up, Cake Train Nation? Good morning to you guys. Good morning, Kane. So, today we have a very special topic. Since there's movies coming out later on, like Terminator Genesis, and we've had um, movies such as Inspector Gadget and things like that that have to do with um, cyborgs, I thought, why not talk about some real-life cyborgs? Now, I know what you're thinking, but these are people who have had either electronic things done to them on purpose or by necessity. First one I want to bring up, this one's probably the weird, one of the weirdest ones I've ever heard of. His name is Jerry Jalava, I think is how you pronounce his name. He lost his finger in a motorcycle accident, and then he had a prosthetic finger put on. But, here's the weird part. The guy had a two gigabyte USB jump drive implanted into his finger. So his prosthetic now has a uh, jump drive in it. I mean, come on. I mean, that's, that's Inspector Gadget type stuff. Can you remember the scene where all of his like fingertips come up? There's all those wacky gadgets and, you know, Pez dispensers, ladders and stuff. This guy has a USB in his finger. You know, that's a little off the wall. Because, I mean, it's useful because you don't have to carry around that kind of thing. But, you know, what is it? Like, you go to work and like, oh, do you have that TPS report? Yeah, I've got it right here on my finger. You know, that's really weird. I don't know. It's it's functional yet funky. So it's funky chanel. Hashtag funky chanel, I guess. So, Kane, what's, what's that uh, real-life cyborg that you found in your research? Now, the first human cyborg that I want to talk about today is a Canadian man named Jens Nauman. No, Nauman. Nauman. However you pronounce it. And he was a man blinded in adulthood who was the first of 16 patients to receive a BCI. And BCI stands for Brain Computer Interface. Implanted on his head to restore his vision. And it was successful. Very successful. So much so that right after the BCI was implanted, he was able to drive a car around the facility's parking lot. Now that is pretty amazing. I mean, his vision wasn't fully restored, but restored so much that he was able to drive a car? That is awesome. Well, I've got one other one that I want to bring up, and this one is a little more extreme. His name is Kevin Warwick. You've probably heard of this guy. Um, he's started a program where they're trying to make man and machine more together, more combined. So back in 1998, this guy gave his body to science for his foundation, and he had a chip, computer chip implanted into his left arm that's called a brain gate. What this does, it basically allows him to control electronics, um, like he could control a robot arm, he could do, he could turn off and on a lamp with just clicking his fingers. Um, he did all kinds of stuff. That was back in '98, and that was a huge thing. Now, more recently, he's upgraded. Back in 2002, it was about 13 years ago, so I'm sure he's even further along. But at two, 2002, 
he was updated enough that they put a uh, system into his arm that was more advanced. So now he can control an electric wheelchair on his own. Also, they've developed a robotic hand that not only you can move with your nerves like a normal hand, but it simulates sensation in your hand. That is insane. I mean, that's amazing for the medical community if they go behind it because people who lose hands and stuff like that can benefit from that because it's like they have their hand back. That's cool for me because I grew up watching Star Wars. And remember in Empire Strikes Back, Luke loses his hand along with Darth Vader, had both lost their hands, and they were given robotic hands. But the kicker was Luke's, he could actually, they tested it by poking it with a needle, and he actually got feeling in his robotic hand. Now that is pretty advanced for robotics and computer engineering. This isn't just a robotic hand you use to with a remote control or something like that. This is connected to your body, and it's part of you. Now the last real-life human cyborg that I want to talk about today is, in my opinion, the most extraordinary. He is a UK man, UK born man named Neil Harbison, who is an award winning artist. But in 2004, he had an antenna permanently installed to his head, into his head. And this thing is fused to his head through a process called osteo integration. It is literally fused to the inside of his occipital bone. Now this antenna allows Neil to hear, let me say that again, hear light spectrums of color that are invisible, including and not limited to infrared and ultraviolet. So Neil can perceive colors that we can't see without like infrared goggles or something. That's pretty crazy, but it gets better. Not only that, but Neil can receive colors from satellites and from cameras. He can receive phone calls directly into his brain, and he can connect to the internet. Wow. And if that wasn't enough for you, in 2004, the same year that he got the antenna installed, he was recognized the first ever human being to be recognized legally by a government as a cyborg. So all the other people on the list are like, well, yeah, by our vague definition, yeah, they're cyborgs. He is literally and legally a cyborg. That's pretty crazy. Also, in 2010, he and a fellow artist founded the Cyborg Foundation, which became the first international organization solely dedicated to helping people become cyborgs and not necessarily for medical reasons. No, the purpose is to encourage people to augment themselves and become cyborgs for artistic purposes, technological, scientific, but also expressive artistic purposes. This is crazy. We're talking about a movement, a huge movement of cyborgism not for just medical research, but above and beyond that. So we have people being encouraged to be cyborgs not out of necessity, and not just for pure scientific endeavors, but for individualistic, expressive, artistic reasons. And that is pretty mind-blowing. It makes you feel like you're living in a science fiction movie. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. And uh, be sure to check out all these people um, and look into it because there was so much, there's so much on real life cyborgs that we couldn't possibly cover it all in one episode. But thanks for sticking around. I'm going to send it over to Drake to do the outro. Peace out, guys. Awesome. So I hope you guys have enjoyed our peek into real human cyborgs. If you guys are interested at all in learning that, make sure you do a little more research on your own. And if you think this is interesting or know of any other cyborgs, post in the comments below and let us know. Also, get ready, because this Friday is our series finale of I Just Woke Up. We've got a big show planned for you guys. 
So I hope you're excited. We're super excited. It's very bittersweet because it's the end of one era, beginning of another. But we're gonna, but we're gonna make it big. It's gonna be amazing. So hope you guys have a great day, and make sure you check out our buddy D Rock at the Real D Rock One, where he vlogs about anything and everything in his life, and at Wrestling Talk One, which is at, which is where he talks about all things pro wrestling. So make sure you guys check him out and give him a shout out. Tell him Kate Drain sent you. All right, we will see you guys next time. Peace out. And remember, Bruce! My butler's gone, he went away.